Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Allegations of corruption against Illinois' most powerful lawmaker. The governor weighs in. Busy signal. People calling 911 couldn't get through. The quick fix by Rockford Fire. Success on the road. If customers can't sit inside, local food trucks are finding a booming business on four wheels. Good evening. I'm Mimi Murphy. Eric is off tonight. The biggest utility company in Illinois admits to bribing friends of House Speaker Michael Madigan. Federal prosecutors charge ComEd in an eight-year corruption. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell is in Springfield with the story. Federal charging documents spell out precisely how clouded power brokers here in Springfield closed a sweet deal for a well-connected power company and stuck their customers with the tab. ComEd paid friends of Speaker Michael Madigan $1.3 million disguised as salary payments or vendor contracts, these documents show. That bribe paid off to the tune of $150 million as the company was allowed to charge their customers higher electric bills after two key new laws were passed through the state house. Now, in a deal with the feds, ComEd will pay back $200 million to the U.S. Treasury to avoid criminal charges. The company is also cooperating in an ongoing criminal investigation into Speaker Michael Madigan. The feds say the speaker had substantial influence and significant control over laws that affected ComEd's bottom line. Governor Pritzker unloaded on the speaker during a press conference this afternoon in Waukegan. The speaker has a lot that he needs to answer for, to authorities, to investigators, and most importantly, to the people of Illinois. If these allegations of wrongdoing by the speaker are true, there is no question that he will have betrayed the public trust and he must resign, therefore. Those federal charging documents also list Speaker Madigan's longtime friend and close confidant, Mike McLean. It says both men, McLean and Madigan, sought out and chased after this corrupt arrangement. But even still, federal prosecutors have yet to bring any criminal charges against Speaker Madigan. They did, however, serve a grand jury subpoena to the Speaker's office this morning. And through a spokesperson, the Speaker says he will cooperate and respond to those requests for documents, which he believes will clearly demonstrate that he has done nothing criminal or improper. But will those documents reveal the full story? Those federal charging documents we've already seen show that McLean at one point told a ComEd executive, don't put anything in writing because all it can do is hurt you. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell. The Illinois GOP chairman released this statement saying, based on the evidence, we believe it's time for Speaker Madigan to do the right thing for Illinois and resign his office. The people of Illinois cannot afford the scandal to drag on for months and years. Authorities believe the man killed in a parking lot Wednesday morning was hit while trying to get out of the rain. Randy Strohacker died when a semi-truck hit him on Walton Street at Walmart. Investigators believe the 59-year-old crawled under the parked semi's trailer for shelter. Heavy storms came down in the area Wednesday morning. Police say the driver of the truck didn't know Strohacker was under the vehicle and drove off, running him over. Strohacker was pronounced dead at the scene. The suburban Chicago mom who admitted to beating her child to death will spend the next few decades behind bars. A McHenry County judge sentenced Joanne Cunningham to 35 years in prison. She faced up to 60 years. Yesterday, she asked the judge for mercy. In December, Cunningham pleaded guilty to killing her five-year-old son, A.J. Friend. Prosecutors claim Cunningham and A.J.'s father, Andrew Friend, killed the five-year-old, then buried his body in a shallow grave in Woodstock last April. Andrew pleaded not guilty to his first-degree murder charge. He is still awaiting trial. After many people got a busy signal calling 911 last night, Rockford Fire says they've come up with a workaround. Last night, some callers couldn't get a 911 operator. The fire department tells us today they had technical issues this week. Turns out the caller could hear the operator, but the operator couldn't hear the caller. So they all moved to the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office's 911 center. We're told there should be no more issues. Rockford Fire responds to a house fire on School Street overnight. It happened just a few blocks west of Central Avenue around 1.30. Crews arrived to find heavy smoke and flames coming from the front of the house. Firefighters say no one was inside and the home appeared to be vacant. 
Damage is estimated at $20,000. Investigators are looking into what caused the fire. Tips from the community help police catch a suspected drug dealer. According to the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department, police received complaints that drugs were being sold out of a house in the 800 block of Sawyer Road. 45-year-old Mark Dahlberg lived in the home. Police say they saw Dahlberg throw a bag of cocaine during an arrest. Inside the home, investigators found more narcotics, including ecstasy, Adderall, and hydrocodone. Dahlberg is currently on parole for a narcotics charge. He now faces possession charges, aggravated fleeing to elude, and resisting a police officer. Illinois Supreme Court makes a change it says will help both tenants and landlords during evictions. According to the new rule, each eviction complaint will need a copy of the notice and relevant portions of the lease. Chief Justice Ann Burke says the change will help self-represented parties on both sides of eviction cases. For landlords, attaching the information will help establish the right to evict. For tenants, the reasons for the notice are spelled out at the start and they can better prepare a defense. The new rule goes into effect immediately. Restaurants can once again have indoor guests, but some have found a safer way to eat out during the pandemic. Food trucks have been open and have seen a steady flow of hungry customers. Dylan Rock is at Rockford City Market Pavilion. And Dylan, the weekly street fest is just one place people visit their favorite food truck. Yeah, that's right, Mimi. Local food truck operators say events like City Market, which put food trucks center stage, are growing in popularity as people look for ways to dine out while staying safe. I thought it was going to be a dead season. I really didn't think we were going to have anything. But now here we are, and it's like it's getting better all the time. It's like it's starting to really pick up, and I'm surprised. Christy Grillo runs the JNC Old Fashioned Ice Cream Food Truck with her husband. She says, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, it's been a full year. I can't believe how much is out there right now. I think I'm busier this year than I was last year. Grillo says there are more events for trucks than ever before here in the state line. New for 2020 is Food Truck Thursday at Forest Plaza. Grillo says customers flocked to her truck last night. We sold a lot of root beer floats, a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, I couldn't believe how fast it was going out the window. Stephanie Serrano from Olivo Taco says she's glad they have a food truck to supplement their business, especially since they couldn't have indoor dining at their recently opened brick and mortar store. All businesses, including the restaurants, have been affected. So having the food trucks has helped the restaurant for us in the meantime. Uh, we're hoping once everything back opens back up, we can um, get back into the same rhythm we, were, we started off with. Uh, but as of now, yes, it's, it's helped a lot. Grillo says food trucks are ideal for people who want to dine out while following social distancing guidelines. You take your, your stuff and you can go walk with your family or you can go sit at a picnic table. You can go anywhere you want. The JNC Old Fashioned Ice Cream Food Truck will be in Belvedere at Sunstrand Park tomorrow for their drive-in movie night. Reporting live in Rockford for your home team, I'm Dylan Siraki. It'll be a good weekend for ice cream. All right, thanks, Dylan. Rockford Housing Complex is getting an upgrade. Rehabilitation plans are underway for Longwood Plaza senior apartments near East State and Charles Street. The Zion Development Corporation will create a mix of new one- and two-bedroom units. Amenities like underground garages, a fitness room, and an outdoor garden are also planned. Funding for the project is through the Illinois Housing Development Authority. It received $26 million in federal low-income housing tax credits to build affordable housing units throughout the state. The city of Rockford has a new representative. The peregrine falcon is now the official city bird. One set up a nest on the Register Star building back in 2018, and seven babies have hatched since then. A bird enthusiast says protecting the environment will keep the falcons and other temporary visitors coming back. We live in the Mississippi Flyway, so we have a lot of birds that migrate through here. Um, they might not stay here year-round, but we have some really cool warblers, the Blackburnian warbler, who are, will pass through here. And making sure that we have the habitat to support those birds on their journey is really important. Coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear from the RPS 205 student who led the charge in naming Rockford's official city bird.
Now your first warm weather forecast with meteorologist Kevin Doom. There's some plenty of sunshine for most of our Friday, but just recently we've had quite a bit more cloud cover move over the area. Here's a live look over the Rochelle Airport using a Merciel Skytrack. Right now we're definitely seeing more clouds than blue sky. Conditions are still very comfortable out there, though. They're a little bit warmer today. Temperatures currently in the lower to middle 80s. 85 currently in Rockford. Residents 84 in DeKalb, 81 in Rochelle, and 82 for current temperature over in Freeport. Humidity is somewhat high, especially in areas down to our south and southwest. So we are seeing uh, temperatures feel a little bit warmer than what the thermometer reads, especially in areas down there. Feeling as though they're 92 in Sterling. Same goes for Savannah. Heat index of 90 in Galena. Here in Rockford currently feels as though we're 88 degrees for the time being. But this will really uh, hold true tomorrow. This will be even more true tomorrow, I should say, as a heat advisory uh, has been spawned by very high temperatures, very high humidity uh, expected in the, uh, for our Saturday. We could see heat index values in the triple digits for a prolonged period of time. We could see heat indices reach near 80 degrees by early tomorrow morning, reach the 90s by late tomorrow morning. Triple digits will be in the area by early afternoon, and then our heat index values will likely hold in the triple digits for several hours thereafter. The hottest period of tomorrow should arrive between, or I, I should say around the late afternoon, early evening. That's when we could see our heat index values anywhere from 105 degrees plus close to 110 degrees in some spots before finally cooling down but very slowly here reaching the upper 90s again later on in the evening things could feel like the 90s well past sunset so we have a very warm day ahead of us tomorrow so a little bit of uh, heat safety tips for you I know it's Saturday but you're definitely going to want to limit your time outdoors especially if you don't have very easy very quick access to air conditioning or at least some shade drink plenty of water if you're outside also wear lots of sunscreen and wear some very light loose fitting clothing as well these are just a few tips to follow. Also, don't be afraid to check on neighbors, friends, and family who don't have air conditioning. Also, educate yourselves on the warning signs of heat stroke and heat exhaustion and what to do if you encounter a person who has one of those two. Looking at a recent satellite and radar, you can see we've had no rain so far today for our Friday, and you can see this cloud cover, though, increasing here over the past few hours. Looking ahead with Futurecast, this cloud cover will stick around through most of the evening and overnight, just some partly cloudy skies, but we're still not expecting any rain all the way through tomorrow morning morning and through most of tomorrow as well. Midday tomorrow, there is a slight chance we could see a pop-up shower or two to accompany this heat. Now, going into the overnight hours from Saturday into Sunday, we expect a cold front to push through and bring us a good chance for some showers and a few scattered thunderstorms as well early Sunday morning, possibly lasting through late morning, stretching into the early afternoon hours. This will likely limit our heating for Sunday, so it's not going to feel quite as warm to wrap up the weekend, but it's definitely going to still feel pretty warm out there for our Sunday. Temperatures tonight are going to remain fairly mild, only dropping into the lower 70s for a low. No rain expected through tonight and just a slight chance tomorrow to accompany this pretty excessive heat. Actual temperatures will be in the lower to middle 90s, but of course, as we saw, they may feel more like the triple digits for several hours throughout the day tomorrow. Temperatures then cooling into the upper 80s for Sunday, mid 80s for Monday, with a few chances for some scattered showers and thunderstorms to end the weekend and to kick off our next work week. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Samantha Rivera. Well, Friday marked another practice Blackhawks goalie Corey Crawford did not participate in. Since Monday, he was deemed as unfit to participate. Head coach Jeremy Carlton told the media today nothing's changed, but they haven't ruled him out moving forward. Whether or not Crawford is able to come back, teammates like Patrick Kane are confident in either of their backup goalies, Colin Delia or Malcolm Subban, taking his place. Delia came up. Um and played with us a couple of years ago and was, was, you know, lights out. He was so athletic, so good, you know, side to side. Um, uh, his quickness is probably something that's really impressive. And then, you know, same thing with Subban, very athletic goalie. Um, just shooting on him in phase two there a lot. You realize how athletic he is, how quick he is. I think we have confidence that one of those guys will step up. Collinson also revealed Connor Murphy and Oli Mata is unfit to participate in today's practice. It's crazy to think just one week from today, the MLB will officially start the 2020 season. But before that, the Chicago White Sox and Cubs will have an exhibition game this Sunday at Wrigley Field. While they've had intra-squad games to keep them busy, White Sox manager Rick Renteria believes actually having a real opponent is something everyone will benefit from. Execution is, is the key. Um, I want them to be, uh, more than anything, the fact that we're able to play against an opponent now. 
I think it's a different vibe, but I want to see where we're at. I want, I want to see, you know, um, how well we're, how cleanly we're playing, things of that nature. Uh, it gives them uh, a little bit more of a, of an incentive when you're playing against your, you know, some opponents, um, let alone our opponents on the north side. Um, it should be fun. Sunday's exhibition game begins at 7.05 p.m. The MLB and Players Association also released the latest COVID-19 testing results from the past week through Thursday, showing six of 10,548 samples showing up as new positives. Five were players and one was a staff member. There was a five-day period where there were no new positives. Since testing began in June, 80 players and 13 staff members have tested positive. And I'll do it for sports. We'll be right back. Pitches will remain dry through the rest of the evening and through the night tonight. Temperatures will also remain fairly comfortable, dropping into the lower 70s. However, they're going to be pretty oppressive tomorrow as we have a heat advisory that goes into effect tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures will be in the lower to middle 90s, where their heat index value is 105 degrees, possibly even higher than that in the afternoon and early evening hours. Things do cool down quite a bit for Sunday. We're in the upper 80s with a chance for a few scattered thunderstorms to wrap up the weekend. Mimi? All right, thanks, Kevin. Sounds like a weekend where you don't want to leave anything living inside a parked car for sure. That'll do it for us. We'll see you again at 6.